A brand new semester and we are jumping with joy for lots of hoops. Plus, we'll update you on the ongoing debate on having a football stadium on campus versus renting out the link. Okay, let's renew for another year on the same terms. Those terms are not favorable for Temple University, unfortunately. I'd like to think that, again, Temple and, and um, the Eagles could come to a reasonable agreement, but it doesn't seem to be that way. Don't touch that remote because Al Sports Update is live and back in 2020. And guess what, Adam? It starts right now. Welcome back, Owls fans. So great to see you. Back with myself, JJ Mahowski, and my partner, Adam Kernally, here inside of TV Studio 3. In the next 30 minutes, we got a big show. We'll catch you up on everything Temple Athletics that you missed over the break. The break excuse me. Plus, later on in the show, we have a new segment that we need your help on called Join My Parliament. But first, let's hoop it up, JJ. A conference win was a must for the Owls as they welcomed in the 11-7 Cincinnati Bearcats Wednesday night. With the weekend loss to SMU and a 2-4 conference record, Temple was looking to defeat the third best team in the AAC. It started out rough for Temple as they trailed just seven minutes into the game. Once they found their stride, it was a back and forth contest. Alani Moore sinks the three from the corner and he cuts the deficit in half. The Bearcats come rumbling back though. Chris Vogt gets to the paint and draws the foul for the and one. He sinks the free throw to regain the lead. Nate Pierre-Louis does his best James Harden impression for two of his 22 points in the game. Halftime score 41-40 Bearcats. The Al shoot 53% in the game, but hey, Ray Dunn 100% at halftime. He was able to go on and win himself a prize to take home. Half number two we go is quite the nail biter and it came down to the wire. Seven tied scores in the game and 10 lead changes, but ultimately Cincinnati is too much for the Owls to handle. Temple falls in the game final score 89 to 82. Temple trailed in the game for most of it. And with this one, Temple for the most first 20 minutes and after having the lead late in the second half, they couldn't hold off the Bearcats late game surge. Both Quentin Rose and Nate Pierre-Louis scored 20-plus points for Temple, while Cincinnati had more distributed scoring with five of their players in double figures. The Cherry and White are now just 2-5 and five in the American. Yeah, and JJ, this one step forward, one step back was on full display last week. The Owls hosted number 16 Wichita State at home a week ago on Wednesday. Temple went into the game looking to break its three-game losing streak. The Owls had three players end up scoring double digits with Quentin Rose scoring 19 in a 65-53 upset of the Shockers. A few days later, Temple went on the road to face SMU. Temple came out in the first half shooting 60% from behind the arc, but the Owls couldn't keep it up. And in the second half, they dropped to SMU 68-52. Last year was Houston and UCF. But this year, the Temple men's basketball team caught another nationally ranked team in its crosshairs. With Wichita State still reeling from a brutal upset to the league course center, let's take an in-depth look at how the Owls pulled it off. Here's Owl Sports Update's Zach McCool. Yes, it was a shocker against the Shockers. Another season and another upset of a nationally ranked team. And it came at just the right time, with the Owls previously riding a three-game losing streak. Defense was the theme of the night for the Owls as they forced turnovers, steals, and blocks. It all ended in a 53-point night for Wichita State, their lowest point total of the year. I'm not even sure we had four or five points in like eight minutes to start the half, so it was just bad, and that was a big part of it, but it wasn't the biggest part of it. The whole, we weren't good in the first half either. And the struggle started and ended with starting guards Eric Stevenson and Tyson Etienne. Neither scored a single point. We wanted to wear those guys down and um, thought our guys did a pretty good job of that. And, and, and the focus and the mindset was if, if we're tired, then they got to be tired. 
And we just wanted to just, just have those guys feel us all game long, and it's, it's tiring. This is the 13th straight season Temple has beaten a ranked opponent. With this win over number 16 Wichita State, the challenge of three more ranked teams to come suddenly seems easier. Between a visit to Memphis, a matchup versus Villanova, and a rematch at Wichita State, who is still receiving votes, Temple certainly hasn't seen the last of the AP Top 25. From the Leah Cora Center, I'm Zach McCool, reporting for Al Sports Update. The Shockers are now currently struggling to stay in the Top 25, but Temple will soon take the trip to Memphis and take on the Tigers, who are currently still ranked at number 20. Here's how the standings are currently set in the AAC with the weekend loss at SMU and now Wednesday's defeat against Cincinnati, the Owls are 10th in the American. With a 2-5 record within the conference, Temple will have to improve that if it wants a shot at the tournament. Elsewhere, Wichita State, as we mentioned, has dropped to 4th and has lost its national ranking. to the women's side of things versus the USF Bulls. Owls looking to complete their homestand with two wins after the team beat SMU earlier in the week. First half action, and here's Mia Davis doing her thing. Bucket plus the foul for the junior forward. She led the way, matching the number on her back, scoring 25 on the night. Just like in Dirty Dancing, don't put Elena Sinecki in the corner. She hits the shot for three of her team high 20. Back come the Owls, and Davis shows she too can hit the three. She didn't miss a three-pointer in the game, making all three shots she took from the, beyond the arc. Here comes Zanecki again, this time at the top of key, just like Davis did prior. Get the picture? Zanecki dropped three triple, excuse me, four triples total in the game. In the end, though, Davis on the Owls side led the Owls to the win, showing off the wheels there, getting to the paint. Final score in this one was 69-66. to Temple is 2-0 at McGonagall Hall so far in the early resume of 2020. Last week's split has the Owls at 11-7 on the year and 4-2 and in conference play. Temple currently the third seed in the AAC behind UConn and T Tulane, who remain undefeated in the conference. Prior to Temple's loss against Wichita State, the team was riding a five-game winning streak. The Owls have a 10 conference, excuse me, they have 10 conference games to go. Temple's final regular season game will be against one of those nationally ranked teams, that Green Wave squad at Tulane on March 2nd. And with the new semester beginning, JJ and I decided it might be nice to have a mid-season analysis or analyst, if you will, of the Temple action on the hardwood. For a little closer look at Temple basketball, we welcome in courts in session Addison Hunsicker to TV Studio 3. Hey, Addison. Hey, JJ. Thanks for having me on, guys. So, Addison, what are the chances that Temple men's basketball can make it into the tournament in March? It's looking like 0% right now. I wouldn't even bank on the NIT if I were... If I were Temple, it's looking like AAC tournament or bust. They already have eight losses so far this season. That's how many they lost as they had before conference tournament play last season. They're 83rd in the net rankings, finished last season ranked 57th in net. The AAC has three teams currently ranked in the top 50 in net, eight in the top 100. And it's going to be a situation down the stretch where the Owls will either pick up a bad loss, which will hurt their NCAA tournament appearances, or they'll fail to pick up a quad one or two wins. So you're looking at having to go perfect the rest of the regular season and even that might not be enough it's I would say it's AAC tournament or bust and now Addison the women's team however they're four and one since the new year all those games were against conference play uh, where, where do you expect the team to end up by the end of the season do, do they have a shot at making the tournament especially with this recent conference strengths yeah I would say they still have a chance uh, in, a, in a similar situation as the men's side where they will have to be close to perfect down the stretch they've made it four times with Tanya Cardoza and have never made it more than when they have never made it in a season where they've had more than three conference losses. They're already at two. You're looking at a path of having to win the AAC tournament, and that's unlikely because of the formidable UConn Huskies. They have strong strength of schedule metrics, 31st overall, 21st non-conference strength of schedule. They're 56th in RPI, which is the women's version of the net rankings that you see on the men's side to kind of sort the teams out. And that's second in the AAC. So they're in a similar situation on the men's side where any loss they pick up down the stretch will be detrimental to their tournament chances. And any time they win, it won't be a, a big enough win to kind of move the needle and put them into that tournament picture. Well, it's definitely going to be tough to see the men make a run at this point, and hopefully we can see the women making that run that you just talked about. Yeah, agreed, JJ. Addison, thank you so much for joining us today.
It's time for our first break, but there's still more to get to on this show, Out. Football talks aren't over just yet with transfers talking and the draft ringing in the new year. Plus, the gymnastics team started 2020 with an 0-2 start, but the Owls had an opportunity to bounce back in their home opener this past weekend at McGonagall Hall. Find out how the team fared when Owl, St Owl Sports Update returns. Welcome back to Owl Sports Update. Just because the military bowl is behind us doesn't mean there isn't a reason for Temple football to not be discussed, Adam. Yeah, and joining us on the desk is Mr. Buckets himself, Ray Dunn. <laughs> Ray, try and forget about your basketball career for a hot second. We need to talk about football and the future careers of some former Temple Owls. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it has been quite an eventful month on 10th and Diamond as the roster reshuffles itself following Temple season. The ten football team will be without quite a few notable faces as the preparation for the 2020 season gets underway. And let's get this started with Owls that are hoping to find themselves playing on Sundays. Last season's roster featured a trio of players that are currently projected to get drafted into the NFL. Redshirt junior center Matt Hennessy and junior quarterback Harrison Hand both declared and are projected to be mid-round selections. Hennessy is arguably the best interior lineman in this year's class and could rise on draft boards in the coming months. Linebacker Sean Bradley is also expected to hear his name called in the late rounds, more than likely going to a team looking for depth at the position. The big play linebacker led the Owls in tackles this season and is certainly should be able to latch onto a roster in the NFL. Other notable Owls that could hear their names called are offensive lineman Javon Fair and linebacker Chappelle Russell. As for the Owls who are continuing their college careers but in new places, there are quite a few. American Athletic Conference Defensive Player of the Year Quincy Roche has announced he's taken his talents to South Beach. Without him, the Owls will be without five defensive linemen from 2019's loaded unit. Elsewhere, tight end Kenny Boa is on his way out, headed to Ole Miss for his final year of eligibility. Redshirt sophomores Aaron Jarman and David Martin Robinson should compete to fill that gap at starting tight end. Finally, the team has made its starting quarterback intentions known for the upcoming season. Anthony Russo will be the man as Todd Santeo has announced he will be transferring. Santeo will more than likely be ahead to a group of five school to compete for a starting job. This opens the door for Trad Beatty to be the backup quarterback going into the upcoming season. The only constant in college football is change and maybe no program knows that as well as the Temple Owls. One of the co-defensive coordinators from last season, Fran Brown, left to take a job with Rutgers. This team has a lot to figure out, but there's still seven months until they face off with Miami. Reporting from the news desk, I'm Ray Dunn. Adam and JJ, back to you. Thanks, Ray. Temple Gymnastics team hosted its first home meet of the season after falling to 0-2 in the tri-meet at Illinois nine days prior. The Owls had a chance to bounce back early after finishing 19-14 last year, and they didn't disappoint. It was a pink out at McGonagall Hall, and the Owls are repping pink shirts and pink uniforms, pink all around. Sophomore Ariana Castrance had herself a day. She broke the program's all-around record with a 39.275 and took first place in all four events. Temple won both matches, beating SUNY Cortland and Southern Connecticut State University with a score of 190.65 in both of those games. The women's gymnastics team is reigning ECAC champions. To keep the crown, the team has a new mentality and approach for 2020 with hopes they can repeat. Al Sports Update's Courtney Murphy has the story. It took 44 years to win that first ECAC championship. One year later, the Temple's gymnastics team is trying to create the correct mentality to pull off a repeat. Once again, second year head coach Josh Nelson is in charge of setting the tone. Last year, my first year, I think they were getting used to me. I'm, I'm pretty intense. You know, I, they know I love them now, though. That's the difference. I think last year, they didn't know that. I think now they know when I get on them, it's because I care about them. Four core values make up the mentality for the team this season. It starts with being thankful for competing, not being afraid to make mistakes, and the main one being relentless. These three values all end up with the fourth core value of never giving up. Part of like 
the relentless mentality is that where we have no doubt and no fear and we're not questioning ourselves. The mentality that bringing into the program now and into competitions is extremely competitive. You know, I told them at the end of the meet, you're disappointed because you know you're better than that. You know, and that's different. When they don't trust you, you can't say stuff like that. So they trust me now. The goal is to not only win the ECAC championship, but also to qualify for the NCAA regionals as a team. A big aspect of the relentless thing is just trusting ourselves, believing that we're capable and we have the talent to do it. It's more of a mental thing. Ranked opponents George Washington and West Virginia are what's ahead to test that new mentality. Reporting from McGonagall Hall, I'm Courtney Murphy, Alice Sports Update. It's off to West Virginia for the tri-meet against two ranked opponents, the West Virginia Mountaineers and the University of New Hampshire Wildcats. The meet will begin on Sunday at 2 p.m. But it's time for our second break. When we come back, we have a special guest joining us here on air. The Temple News' own Colin Evans will join us live to discuss the absence of a stadium contract with Temple football in 2020 and what that means for the upcoming season. Plus, the stands might have been full for the men's basketball versus Wichita State, but are students really aware on campus? Find out when Al Sports Update comes back in 90 seconds. Welcome back to Al Sports Update. With basketball season in full swing, you might have noticed many empty seats in the Leah Cora Center. Or maybe you didn't notice one at all if you're one of the many students who hasn't attended a game this season. Basketball and football have seen attendance number waiver, and the focus is coming down to the students. You may find it hard to believe that the fifth winningest program in all of college basketball struggles to fill their 10,000 seat arena. But that is exactly the challenge that Temple University is facing. On average, the Leah Core Center is barely half full, with about 5,800 fans attending per game. That puts the Owls in the bottom half of the attendance race. It really is disappointing because I feel like having so many fans, you know, cheer on the team, especially for, for basketball, I feel like it kind of elevates the performance of the team overall. There are fun promotions and giveaways, such as Wednesday's Meme Night, which featured a Baby Yoda poster to the first 1,000 students in attendance. And when students do show up to the game, the focus of the engagement becomes evident. We've also thought about that as well. We moved last year halfway through the season we moved the band to behind the basket. As you know, students sometimes will come to the games, but they don't stand all the time. The issue of engagement doesn't just lie with basketball, it's football too. In 2018, the Owls tracked about 28,500 fans per game. You know, I, I give credit to Temple for recognizing that students do not have a lot of disposable income. The free tickets are just one way Temple tries to encourage students to get through the turnstile. Students at larger universities such as Clemson and Penn State often have to pay their way to games. It seems like there should be a demand for it, but it might just be geographical territory of the Northeast. It's relatively not quite as popular as it would be down South. This theory will be put to the test very soon with the biggest local powerhouse in Villanova coming to North Broad on February 16th. Students who are interested in obtaining a free ticket to that Villanova matchup can guarantee themselves a seat by attending the ticket giveaway at the women's basketball game on February 15th against Houston. Now filling the seats for football isn't the biggest concern right now, JJ. It's finding seats and a place to actually play in 2020. Thanks to TUTV's partnership with the Temple News, we bring in news editor Colin Evans to the show. Colin is a junior dual major journalism in and economics, and he's been writing for the Temple News for two years now. Recently, Colin wrote an article detailing how Temple football still doesn't have a contract with the Eagles for 2020. Hey, Colin, thanks for coming on. Thanks for having me, guys. All right, Colin, so first question here. So you recently wrote an article about the whole stadium talks and the lack of a contract. What is going on with that? Can you elaborate on, you know, just what you wrote about in your article? Well, so what we know is that basically as of last week, the university still didn't have a contract to play at the link in 2020. And this isn't only significant because they have to play somewhere by September, which is when their first home game is, but also that it casts increasing uncertainty into the university's plan to build an on-campus football stadium, which has been in the works for several years now. So Colin, you mentioned this a little bit, but are there really any other options for the Owls at this moment in time, or is it just the link or bust? Well, 
that that's a kind of a matter of contention. I think some people may say there are other options uh, apart from the on-campus stadium that they have planned, but the university has consistently said in the past that they wouldn't play anywhere else besides the link, at least on a short-term basis. Well, Colin, we appreciate you briefly stopping on the show. Hopefully, we'll, we'll touch base again and talk more with you as we get, hopefully, some updates throughout the spring. Thanks, Colin. No problem. Thank you. Well, it's time to take our final break, but when we come back, we have a new segment that we want to introduce for the new year. Yep, it's Parliament season at Al Sports Update. Find out whether or not I think JJ's Parliament is worth joining or not. Plus, you too can get in on the action. Find out how when we when we return in 90 seconds. Welcome back to Owl Sports Update. For those of you who may not know, a parliament is a group of owls who stay together. On our newest segment here at Owl Sports Update, we're gonna create a parliament by getting you involved with our debates. After we present our points, you'll have a chance to join our conversation on Twitter at Owl Sports Update. So I'll get it started here. Starting off, Adam, let's take a look at our last discussion with Colin. Temple football is without a stadium. I'm going to go out on a limb and say that if Temple doesn't renew a contract with the Eagles at Lincoln Financial Field, we will not be seeing Temple football at 10th and Diamond next season. Can you join my parliament or have I taken this one too far? JJ, it might be a little bit too far, but I'm going to be honest with you. First of all, let's just take a look at the roster. We had Ray Dunn on earlier, and he was talking about some of the guys leaving. Let me just break it down for you real quick. This is just starters from last year, notable starters. Isaiah Wright. Kenny Yaboa, Todd Senteo, Matt Hennessy, Javon Fair. That's just offensive. Defensive, you got all the linebackers. You got Sean Bradley, Chappelle Russell, Sam Franklin. Harrison Hands is leaving and um, going to the draft. And, oh, by the way, the reigning AAC Defensive Player of the Year, Quincy Roche, he's on his way to Miami. Put all that together, and frankly, the facts are it, it's going to be tough to even, like, you know, it's a new team. It's a new element. It's a new identity of this team. And if they, they don't even have a contract in place right now with the Eagles, you know, it, it might be a good time, you know what I mean? But frankly, I don't know if that would happen. But as our producer, Kyle, Kyle Morello, jokingly said when we were talking about this, where else are they going to play, right? The Lee Accor Center? Like, I mean, it's a very possible that we will officially, um, you know, see them eventually join the Eagles in a contract. But for now, I'm going to join your parliament, JJ. This contract has existed for a long time. You're right with all the players leaving. And I know I might be going a little too far to say that, but... Hey, you've played there for a long time. There's no on-campus stadium and really no discussion otherwise or buzz around campus of the football team going anywhere else. I think they'll either play at the link or not play at all. Yeah, I completely agree. Colin even mentioned that when we just had him on about no talks. You know, there's no future talks moving forward. If you guys want to join the conversation, like we said earlier, join us on Twitter at Al Sports Update, and your voice will be heard and we can interact with you. And we want to know if you want to join JJ's Parliament. But for now, that's all the time that we have for today. Be sure to check us out on Twitter where you can find digital exclusives with Courts in Session and Al Access Pass being released every Tuesday and Wednesday afternoon. And if you can, tune in next Thursday at 12 noon, same time as this show for the debut of Brooklyn Vaughn and Don Gillespie as they take the desk for the first time as Al Sports Update anchors. For JJ Mahalski and myself, Adam Cornelli, JJ Mahalski. <laughs> have a great week, everybody. Take care.